Hi, I'm Steve, and I'm going to give you an overview on how a game of Agatha Christie's Death on the Cards plays. It's a social deduction game of murder and mystery where everyone's guilty of something, but only one person is guilty of murder. Now this is an overview, so if you want to find out how to set the game up in detail, we've got another video on that about setting the deck up for all the different variations. But for now, we're going to assume you're set up and you're ready to go. First thing you need to work out is who goes first. The person that goes first is the person who was born closest to Agatha Christie's birthday. That's September the 15th, in case you were wondering. Start with that person and go clockwise around the table and have everyone declare their innocence. It's a really good baseline for working out who you think is trustworthy and who's a bit shifty. After all, you are going to start accusing each other of murder, so it's good to have that. Then you're into the game proper. Everyone can have one of these player aid cards and they tell you what you can do on every turn. So, one of the options we have is play an event card. Event cards have this green icon on them, and they affect everyone around the table in different ways. The exact way is specified on the card. So for example here I've got point your suspicions. This has everyone at the table count down from three to one, and on one they have to point at who they think the murderer is. That person then has to reveal a secret. I've got here, look into the ashes. This allows you to look through the top five cards in the discard pile and take one back into your hand. Another one here, card trade. Card trade allows you to pick a player and they have to trade a card with you. You might get something useful, but maybe you'll get one of these other cards, a devious card, which has this pink icon on it. I've got one here, this is social faux pas. If I received this from another player, I'd have to reveal a secret. So that's not so good. But bear in mind, these only activate when you receive them from another player. If you pick them up from the draw pile, they're in your hand and you can play them on someone else. Third type of card is the instant card. This is a not so fast you fiend card. If someone plays something and I don't like it, I don't want it to happen, I can cancel that. Someone else, of course, could cancel my not so fast you fiend card. But then if I had another one, I could cancel their not so fast you fiend card. It can get complicated, but it's an option. The fourth kind of card ties in with our second option of what we can do on our turn. We can play a set of detective cards. I've got here two Tuppence Beresford cards. You can see they're the same, and they both have this two icon, so I know that's how many there are in a set. If I play those down in front of me, then, as the card says, I choose a player who must reveal a secret card of their choice. Brilliant. Now, the third option won't happen at the start of the game, but as more and more detective cards appear in front of players, it's definitely an option. It allows you to play a detective card onto someone else's existing set, and you then trigger that set as if it's just been played. When you're done with your turn, you can discard as many cards as you want. I'm going to get rid of these three. You don't have to take an action either, but if you don't take any of the actions listed on the how to play card, you have to discard at least one card. Then. The final thing you do is draw back up so you have six cards in your hand. Play then passes around clockwise. Everyone keeps taking turns until the game ends. The game can end in one of three ways. The first way is the murderer is caught. They'll be caught by this card being revealed. The secret card which says you're the murderer on the underside. Only the murderer has this. If this is turned face up, they've been caught, they've been arrested. Well done. Unfortunately, there are two ways the murderer can escape. The first is if all the cards in the draw pile get used up. And that reveals at the bottom this, the murderer escapes card. And that means just that, they've escaped, probably to another country with very poor extradition laws. That's why if someone discards a lot of cards and starts using up all the draw deck, maybe they're being a bit suspicious. The final way that the murderer can escape is if everyone else around the table is in social disgrace. That means all of the secret cards are face up, they can't really activate anything in the game anymore, the murderer can just get away. They've got away scot-free because no one else will believe them. That's how the game works in principle. So if you've got other more detailed questions, maybe check out the How to Set Up a Deck video, or the one that explains how detective cards work in greater detail.